Now, here's Joe Cristiano. Good morning, everyone. Joe Cristiano here. Pleased to be back. I hope that uh, you'll enjoy this program as much as uh, you enjoyed the last one. Last week, we talked about the concept of critical thinking. Now, you know, concepts are kind of interesting. You know, this belong, concepts belong like in a, um, a science uh, a seminar. You know, we want hard facts, don't we? we? We don't want concepts, Joe. You know, concepts, uh, yeah, they're fl- fleeting. You know, you can talk about them. They sound good, but they never work. So why bother with it? Well, I'm going to try to bring a concept home, folks. All right? Because if we do not comprehend the, the concept of critical thinking, we can do nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. You see, we cannot even listen to any other talk radio program without critical thinking. Because either we reject it all, which would probably not be correct, or we would accept it all, which would probably be just as bad. We have to be able to think for ourselves. When I say we have to think for ourselves, when I'm saying that we need to be independent of thought. Now, when I say independent of thought, does an American come to mind? I'm sure they don't. You see, in order to embrace the concept of critical thinking so that you can know where you are, where you are going, and what you should do, you need to do one simple thing, folks. And this is simple. And your mother has told you this. Just be truthful. That's all it takes is be truthful. Understand that the truth hurts. You remember that movie Matrix where if you took the blue pill, you, you accepted the blissful existence, phony existence. It was blissful. But if you took the red pill, you had the hurt of reality, of truth. The hurt of truth. Today we're going to talk about the hurt of truth. I'm going to feed you the red pill. The first thing that each one of us need to do, if we truly want to understand the concept of critical thinking and be honest with ourselves, we need to stand before a mirror and repeat these words. I affirm that I am a subject of the state and exist exist solely to benefit those I serve. I'll bet you that really hurts, doesn't it, folks? I exist solely for the benefit of those I serve. You say, Joe, there's something wrong with you. Read our Constitution. Our elected officials are public servants. Oh, are they? Are they really public servants? Are they the ones that are serving us? I can hear some people now say, well, you know, Joe, you seem to have a real negative attitude about this. You know, this country will get nowhere unless we start thinking positively. Of course, we think positively. I can tell you one thing. that We we can make progress and get to where we're going to go. You know, with a negative attitude like yours, which I abhor, we'll never get anywhere. Well, you've heard that before, haven't you, folks? Don't ever speak negatively. No, 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 no. Ostracize, 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 ostracize. You'll be ostracized. No one will speak to you. You'll be a nutcake. You'll be one of those people who wear tin foiled hats. I challenge everyone listening to this program before a mirror, even if you don't believe it, even if you don't believe it, try it. And repeat the words I affirm that I am a subject of the state. Not a citizen, a subject of the state. You know you are. On April 15th, when you finally had to run to the post office to file your taxes, did you feel like they were the, they were the servants and you were the master? Absolutely not. And the part that hurts is that I, I exist solely to benefit those that I serve. How could I say such a thing? Well, Joe, I think you got it all wrong there. You know, they serve us. We don't serve them. I hear that. 
But yet, can you show me any officer, any officer in government that is living worse than the subjects that they control? When there's a downturn in the economy, jobs are being lost because of government regulation and overregulation and misregulation. And you're out there on govern- government subsidies. Do you think that the guy in office is cutting his pay? No. You know what they do? They surreptitiously vote themselves a pay increase. And if you don't believe me, look at the salaries of those people in office compared to those people in the private sector. It now is substantially higher. And benefits? You and I couldn't dream of having benefits like that. Now, these are the people who are the servants. And then they come out with edicts such as, well, you know, we have to control these guns. They're getting kind of da- they're getting out of hand. People are getting killed. You know, we are for the protection, for the protection of the citizens. What we're going to do is we're going to take everyone's guns away. We're going we're gonna to register them, make sure that everyone is safe. I have an idea. I have an idea. I'm for 100% gun control. Shocks you, doesn't it? 100%. I say get rid of all the guns, everything. Destroy every one, every gun in the United States. But you know how we're going to do it? First thing we're going to do is take the guns away from all the evildoers. How about we do that? But after we're assured that all the evildoers have no weapons whatsoever, then we take the guns away from the second tier of evildoers, government employees. When the, when the president walks around, he doesn't have an army of people with, AK, with, with automatic weapons protecting him. Isn't it amazing? Just think of that for a second. Think. When the president goes somewhere, he has an army of people, a little army, protecting him. But when your wife walks the street, and if she is found with a, a small gun in her purse, she'll go to jail in many states. I affirm that I am a subject of the state. I exist solely for the benefit for those I serve. Say them. Say those words. Once you do, if you don't believe them, if you can prove, if you can prove that you are not a subject of the state, right, then continue to think that way. You say, well, Joe, how do I get there? Let me uh, placate me. How do I get there? As I said last week, the first thing you need to do is you need to shed yourself of all belief systems. Now, please, don't get angry. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not asking you to shed your belief in God. Don't go there. I'm talking about this political party is better than that one, and I believe this, and I think that, and, and, and these people represent that. It's all garbage. It means absolutely nothing. What matters is the end result. And the end result is always the government taking money from the populace, giving it to someone else for political means. Every time, not sometimes, not 99% of the time, not 99.9% of the time, 100% of the time. It always works that way. But you're led to believe because you guys, America has decided to take the blue pill. The, uh, the blue pill. And the blue pill, uh, bliss, blissful ignorance. We live in blissful ignorance. Look at what we do. We spend as much time behind TV, the the TV tube, as we do at work. And today, more time behind the TV tube than at work because many of us don't even have a job. And you know what's the problem with the job situation that that capitalism people, though? You know, got to get rid of those capitalism people, you know, or else we got jobs. What a dumb statement that is. What a dumb statement that is. Everything we hear, absolutely everything we hear has absolutely no validity and we buy it. Until we seek the truth, we have to be truthful with ourselves. I tell people, you never have to be honest with me. I don't care if you're honest with me. It makes no difference if you're honest with me. There's one thing I will expect from everyone that I know and every friend that I have. And that is 
I want them to be honest with themselves. And I hear this, I hear, well, Joe, I guess you don't believe it. You don't think you, you don't believe your wife loves you? Ha <laughs> ha, answer that one. And I, hear, I get that all the time. You don't believe your wife loves you. I don't believe my wife loves me. I'll say that on the air. I'll broadcast it around the world. I hope they translate that into every language on this globe. I do not believe my wife loves me. We've been married for decades. I love her more today than I ever have. Every day with my wife is a first date. Ask her. You see, I don't believe my wife loves me. I know she loves me. Once I say I believe she loves me, I'm saying I don't know. When you believe or you think, I don't know. That's what she's saying. I don't know. And when we hear, well, let's watch TV, and we hear all these politicians, what word do you hear constantly over and over and over again? Well, you know, I think, I, I think we, we have the inflation under control, and I believe with this program we can ameliorate any, uh, any uh, shock to the system and our economic, yeah, think, believe, think, believe, think, the whole thing. In other words, they're saying, I don't know what we did is going to work, and I don't know if the economy's going to get any better. Man, I don't know anything. That would be truthful. When we stand up and we start yelling back at the TV saying, be truthful, I'm turning you off. Then, only then could we start thinking critically. We've got to take that red pill where truth hurts. I get so angry at this. It's so simple, but people won't do it. I ask people, stand in front of the mirror and repeat, I am a subject of the state. We all are. Hey, I'm no different. I'm with you guys. I'm with you. I'm in the cattle car with you. And I exist solely for the benefit of those I serve. I want you to really think about that. Think until it hurts. We don't think anymore. And we have to shed all of our beliefs about everything. Absolutely everything. When you believe, you're saying, I don't know. Walk around. And say, instead of saying, every time you say, well, I believe this is the case, you say, I don't know this is the case. If you think, I don't know, after a while you'll say, my God, I, I don't know. I, what happens is I probably don't know if that's true. Let me find the truth. Let me find the truth. The most egregious form of slavery is relegated to those who think they are free. And people say, well, you know, I seek the truth. You know, I do a lot of reading. I read the newspaper every day, and I, I, watch, tell, I watch the news. Yeah. You know, Will Rogers, our Oklahoma, our shining star of this state, Will Rogers, had a statement that was so true. He said, those who don't read the newspaper, back then there was no television, those who don't read the newspaper on a daily basis are uninformed. Those who read the newspaper are misinformed. True words have never been spoken. So continue to read that stuff. Now, is there stuff out there that's true? Yes. It's sometimes very painful to read because it's not affirming your belief or what you think. It's telling you this truth. It's feeding you the red pill. We don't like the red pill. It's bitter. The blue pill, oh, sweet. Oh, man, it's like a oh, cherry pie. We've had cherry pie until we're overweight. You know, when you think of Americans today, back, back before World War II, if you saw pictures of an American, what did you see? You saw this guy with big shoulders, you know, uh, washboard abs and, you know, big, strong guy. Today, you know, when you see a picture of America, you know what you look at? You look at this big glob, you know, looks like a sorrowful sack, right, with tattoos on. And he has this look on his face that he has never, never thought of a thing in his life. We'll come back after this uh, break. Thank you. 